Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a video titled Five German Character Traits I Really Respect coming from Nalf. Great channel. Subscribe to him if you haven't. Uh, American living in Germany. Uh, if you haven't watched his uh, video, this version of his video, and uh, this is the first time you're going to be seeing it, uh, link will be in the description so you can uh, go support the original video as well and I uh, just want to say thank you for watching please do like and subscribe share the video and uh, help me get to as many subscribers as possible uh, starting with you but um, yeah without further ado guys let's get right into this video there are certain characteristics that in general many German people seem to have in common they seem to be part of a national attitude in this video, I'm going to talk about five traits and characteristics of Germans that I have really come to respect and admire. Some of them are smaller, more trivial things, but some are deeper. In fact, the last point on this list is pretty intense and could be considered controversial. However, I think it's an important thing to point out. Okay. So, here are five characteristics of Germans I really respect. Having a high standard of excellence. You know, okay. the most respected made in tag in the world of any country is the made in Germany tag. You say it's number eight. Wow. So you have, you literally have France, Japan, Italy, Canada. No. <laughs> How dare you? Okay, mad respect to Canada, but I, would, I was not expecting Canada to be above uh, the United States. But okay, that's, that's, that's okay. The UK, EU, yeah, the, the entire EU put together, I genuinely think they would have higher uh, quality made in, uh, you know, their country. Um, Japan, I, I definitely know they have cars, you know, and they're, they're pretty respected. I think in the United States, no one really respects um, American vehicles that much, you know, we love them, but we don't. Oh, Finland is number 11. That is wild, it's crazy, right? But um, yeah, um, you know what's funny? Finland, the United States, um, UK, Canada, those are all countries. That <laughs> Dude, those are all mine, those are all me. Anyways, but this is actually really crazy for me. Shout out to Germany for being number one though. Switzerland, yeah, expected. Whether it's something physical that you make that's world-class, like German cars or German houses that are built and are meant to last a lifetime, or things that you don't physically make, that you can't physically touch, what comes to mind for me is a German friendship. Germans are typically slow to call somebody a friend, and that is because there's a high standard of excellence when it comes to friendship as well. Man, don't feel me when I just sideline. Dang. There's a great example. Oh, okay. My good friend Nico Bang. He has a high standard of excellence and only wants to be filmed when he is performing in an Happy excellent oh, manner. Oh, there you go, Bang. There's Nico's excellent tackle. Uh, there's this standard of excellence that Germans have in many different aspects of life, and I don't even think Germans necessarily realize that they have it. But it is a common trait for people in this country, and it's something that I really respect and admire. Good point. So I played college football in the United States for four years, and this is a world Ooh. where you have practices, Ooh. lifting session, training sessions, meetings, all throughout the week on a very tight schedule. And we are taught during that time that being on time very is being important. 10 minutes early. And this is something that I really value. Nothing bothers me more. Well, I'm sure there's things that bother me more, but I think this is one thing that I think he's getting on to the number two point, which is time, Germans value time. Uh, this is one thing that I think if I ever lived in Germany, I don't know if that will ever happen, right? Because I can never predict, I never predict living in Finland. It wasn't a, a, a choice like, okay, I choose that. It was just something that happened, right? And when you let life flow like that, it's really much more 
you know, beautiful rather than you choosing because disappointments come when you choose, right? However, when things just fall into place, you, you really don't get disappointed at your choices or at yourself. It's really, oh man, I wish this wasn't what I had, but it's not going to be like, oh man, man, I made a mistake again. Anyways, so the point is like time is very important to me. And I think that genuinely, if I ever lived in Germany, that would be one of the things that makes me really smile, seeing people being very punctual and on time. It's, it's a beautiful thing. This bothers me a lot when people are late to things. And right. this is a very rare thing in Germany. German people are world famous for being on time and punctual. This is something that I absolutely love about German people. This is a characteristic that I really value. Now the Deutsche Bahn the last couple of years, this might be <laughs> a different story. Being late is wasting everyone's time. I love the way that our coaches in college would explain this. Say we have a meeting that has 45 people in it and you're one minute late to that meeting, you just wasted 45 minutes of people's time. And That's this is right. how I always think about this and I That's really true. value being on time, which means being five to 10 minutes early for everything. And this is something that I very much admire about German people. Planning and preparing for things. Now, if you watched my previous video about the trip in Scotland with my girlfriend, Laura, you will have heard me go on and on about the German characteristic of planning and preparing for things. And Germans really it's a, it's have a, this reputation of it's not good really thing. leaving things up to change. Don't tell me that that's number three because, um, yeah, fall right in line with time. It's like, like when I knew I was actually going to be moving to Finland, I promise you not, by February, I was already packed. And I came to Finland in June and my suitcase was already packed. I got rid of everything I know I would not be needing anymore and everything that I knew I would need, I started to prepare for the transition. It's a very important thing and I think a lot of people don't understand that pre preparing and actually having a free flow is very, very important. It saves you a lot of time and stress. It literally does but figuring out how things are going to go out and plan for what could happen, what you expect to happen, and preparing for things that maybe you don't even expect to happen. For right. most of my life, I've been more of the, hey, let's kind of just feel it out and let's wing it and see how it is the day of sort of mentality. And in certain aspects, I still am like this, but I have taken note of the German way of planning and preparing for things, and I've implemented that more and more into my life. Yeah, just overall, in general, the way that Germans seem to think ahead and plan things out is something I really admire. Now, I've talked about this quite a bit before in previous videos, but the mentality when it comes to a work-life balance for people mm. in this country. I made a whole video about it going into more detail last fall called why I decided to work like a German and that goes into a little bit more detail on it. But in short, German people are very good at working hard, being efficient and productive when it's time to work and then stopping and resting and recharging when it's time to relax. It's and a good the thing. thing. Is the Germans are pretty world famous for being productive and efficient. So this recharging and work-life balance doesn't seem to take away from German efficiency or productivity at all. In fact, a uh, study shows it, that it actually helps it. So this is something that I really admire, this trait and this attitude towards a work-life balance where you are working hard and productive, but you also are a human being and you rest and recover. Really admire the attitude that Germans have. When it, it, is, I, it is actually really important to do this, you know, because like I, I, I sometimes don't do it. However, it's very important to do it because like you're human, never forget that. You are human before you are anything else. Without being human, you can't achieve none of the nonsense you already achieved in your life. So you gotta rest up and you gotta, you know, take care of the, you know, frame, the, 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 the darn thing that you're utilizing to get all these achievements, man. To this. Number five, the red one. Probably history, ain't it? Probably gonna be history. So this one could be a little bit controversial, but I think it's important. And I, I've mentioned versions of this in the past, but 
The thing that I really admire uh, about Germans is the balance and approach that people in this country have when facing and talking about this country's dark past. Every single country has a dark past. And I think some do a better job at handling it than others. And I think Germany sort of leads the world in that aspect. And there's a balance to doing this. There's a little bit of nuance when approaching a subject as delicate as this. And what I admire about Germany is the way that they do such a good job of educating their population on what happened during World War II and the Holocaust, studying it, having museums and statues and memorials and leaving up concentration camps that people can visit, having all of that be a part of society and education, while at the same time not making modern day Germans who had nothing to do with this feel, responsible. feel guilty personally right. about yeah. it. This is an important balance. You must educate because those who do not know the past are doomed to repeat it. But then you must also have a sense of moving forward and not forcing a population to feel a guilt forever based on their ancestors' actions. Of exactly. Course, I totally agree with what Nalf is saying right here. It's quite, you know, the opposite when you look at a lot of things in the United States, you know, th though the United States is way larger than, uh, you know, Germany and the impact of having more people, more confusion, right? So the people like, you know, pretty much Americans, the, 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 they don't really think about things like this, you know, and you know, the most common history problem with the United States is obviously slavery, which was in probably every single country probably right some of them were discovered so they didn't really have it but slavery is something that you know kings and all these people used to get you know to a higher level right and it's not really about race people just make it about that but whatever um the thing is they don't really take this you know route to actually you know discuss the issue it's like a hate 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 and it just continues for generation and generation like it happened already the most you can do is move on from it by simply educating one and um simply allowing people to know that mistakes were made in the past but that's not how it should be you know it's, it's crazy we're gonna have some people on both ends of the extremes you know who people who say you know what stop talking about this in schools we don't even need to educate people about it just forget it and don't talk about it that's stupid. And then you have people on the other side that are saying, no, everyone, modern day Germans need to feel badly for this. And if you're a German, this is your fault. Also stupid. It's very important exactly. to find the nuanced middle. And I think Germany does a great job of that. And what makes me admire this even more is the fact that I think my own country does not do a good job of this. Like most of the other countries in the world, my country also has a <laughs> Exactly. Struggle to find the Crazy how it's, you know, I'd imagine it's actually around the same time. It's actually around the same time. Nuanced way of approaching it and dealing with it in the way that Germany does. In the United States, the land of extremes, we love taking everything to the extreme. The yeah, approach is either you know, slavery actually wasn't that bad, and uh, we don't even <laughs> really need to talk about it. Like, yeah, it wasn't that bad! Don't even talk about it. That's stupid. And then you've got people on the other side that say, if you are a white person, you should personally yeah. feel guilty for slavery. Yeah, at times, it like, I feel so bad. Like, you know, like, you think about, like, being white, and it's like... It's like a burden on your shoulder for no reason at all. Like, you don't understand. Being a white American, it actually feels like there's a boulder on your shoulder. Like you're responsible for something that you had nothing to do with. So, I definitely get what Dolph is saying, man. And I agree to a thousand. Also stupid. There is, like Germany has successfully found, a nuanced middle where you properly educate your population about its dark past that its country has, while also not making modern day people who had nothing to do with said dark past feel guilty about their existence today. I am always impressed and admire the way modern day Germans speak about World War II and the Holocaust in this country's dark past. Yeah. 
Good video enough. I appreciate this very much. Great message at the end. Number five was hats off. Beautiful. Uh, if you don't think it was beautiful, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> no, I don't know. But um, yeah, it was beautiful. Shout out to Nalf. You know, he has really great videos, you know, really, really great videos. Uh, I aspire to be like Nalf. <laughs> but anyways, man, thank you guys for watching. I'm out of here. Peace.